Hey guys, welcome back and I'm now going to be filming my September wrap up which feels really weird to say like this year feels like it's going so quick like it's almost going to be 2025 basically. Um, so I'm actually filming this very very slightly early and I said that as in it's the 30th of September but I know that I'm not going to finish a book tonight um, and so I feel comfortable filming this right now. I don't usually I'm usually like the first, or like in the first few days. Um, but anyway, I read 15 books this month. Um, and they were all full, proper books. Well, one was a novella, but the, the other 14 were actual proper um, books. Well, obviously they're all books, but like full standing ones. Although there was one that was definitely on the shorter side. Um, I the only reason I was able to read this many so this is my highest amount that I've read in a month my previous was 13 yeah so my previous highest was 13 um and I think that 13 previously was full of books um but anyway yeah 15 books it's absolutely wild the only reason I was able to read this many was because I did my seven books in seven days if I hadn't have done that I would have been about seven shorter well maybe like five shorter so but that would have still been like 10 books which is still impressive but yeah basically my goal for that seven books in seven days if you haven't watched it was to cut down my currently reading which at the start of the video was 27 yeah which was all because i did my starting a new book every single day for a month challenge although it wasn't a finish your book every day it was just a start a book every day and obviously I was slowly cutting through some of those, but then I was still adding more to my current reading. So my goal this month had been like to do that. Um, and I think I'll probably sort of carry that over into next month, but I won't as prioritize my current reading, but there are still some that I think would be perfect for me to read in October um, that I could obviously read in October. So let's start this off. I first thing I read was The Lord Sorcerer by Olivia Atwater. This was the um, kind of novella that came before Half a Soul. Um, I read this three stars. It was alright. It was fine. It was lovely. It was nothing special. Um, the only reason I read it is because it was attached to the end of the Kindle edition of Half a Soul. So I was like, well, I might as well read it, um, which is what I did. Because if you didn't know, I read Half a Soul at the end of August. Um, like I'd finished it at the end of August. Then the next book that I finished was The Two Lives of Lydia Bird. This is one that I'd been wanting to finish for a while. Because I'd been like 30, 40-ish pages in for a while. Um, I rated this four stars. Um, I really enjoyed this. Um, I will say that Lydia definitely isn't for everybody. She was a little bit annoying at times. Um, I did enjoy um, kind of Jonah's character and how that came into it. Um, and I enjoyed the topic um, explored of grief um, and what grief can do to you um, and all of that thing. Um, and like what um, kind of the experience of like unexpected, like all of a sudden, like grief and trying to resolve feelings and all of that and like wondering the like if they had lived what would happen next kind of thing but yeah I really enjoy this at four stars um I I haven't read if he had been with me but I kind of feel like in some respects this probably packs some of the same emotional stuff as what that did I did get emotional on one of the things I can't remember what it was it was towards the end of the book I would definitely recommend and this is one that I have never actually heard anyone speak of at all. And then the next book that I finished was Devil's Breath by Jill Johnson. I rated this the three stars. I think at the time I toyed with three and a half. I could have still rated it three and a half in the video. But I think I'm just going to go with a three. It was good. Um, well, it was all right. It had an interesting storyline, but ultimately it didn't. It kind of felt like a cosy thriller and a little bit like I didn't f like it's probably not meant to be but it didn't kind of pack any like oh like obviously I wanted to know what happened next 
but it didn't pack that like gut like oh my god i need to know what happened next and honestly the main character just freaking annoyed me so much so so much the author might have intended that fine but i just i didn't like the main character then i finished reckless by lauren roberts this is book two in the powerless trilogy i rated this a 3.75 now i rated power uh, i rated powerless a five stars this definitely did lack i will say my rating is definitely higher because i liked the banter between Peyton and kai but ultimately the plot just isn't really there like for the first i want to say maybe 100 pages it definitely is and then and like there's definitely that like cat and mouse aspect and then there was basically the whole reason for them having forced proximity and it was just like yeah this is lacking now i did enjoy the moment um at the end um in the field and i didn't see the ending i know some people did i spoiled it slightly for myself in which i then because of that sort or oh okay he's gonna that's what's gonna happen but i didn't i wouldn't have guessed otherwise it was it was nice i do think you can't you do kind of need to read it before fearless comes out but you as bad as it sounds you could probably read a summary online and then go into fearless like i said my rating is higher because i liked the characters then i finished despair room by laura starkey i i rated this a four stars but it's probably more like a 3.75 kind of thing i maybe even down to a 3.5 um the story was nice it was sweet i enjoyed the kind of conversations between the main characters whose names i cannot remember i enjoy this it was really sweet um there was no spice or anything or like there was implied spice but there wasn't actually there might have been like some kissing um i don't remember a lot about this book i just remember i enjoyed it it was nice it was sweet then i read assistant to the villain by hannah nicole mera or mare um i rated this a four i rated this a three and a half but i put it as a four on goodreads um i put in my little comment i put small text made it seem long to read i enjoyed the story and i'm interested in reading the sequel which kind of summarizes the point it it is small text in reality it's probably just i think it's like the same size as what um akatar is but and i think the sequel is the same i enjoyed this i didn't it took me a long while to get through it um just because again i was starting i'd started but there's too many books and obviously i'm going to be overwhelmed with the amount of books that i had i loved the way it was like it kept you guessing um i didn't guess the ending and i think in some ways it would have been quite hard to do but then some people could have picked up on the ending um and what was being implied um because there definitely were the odd hint but i think you'd have had to be really detective to properly spot it but yeah i'm interested in reading the sequel i do own the sequel i probably won't get to it in october or probably i probably won't even get to it this year but i'm glad to have read this then i read the woman on the ledge by ruth mancini i think it's mancini i i put this as a three stars on goodreads it might have been like a 3.25 um i enjoyed this i remember enjoying the plot for like what would have been the first part i then kind of had stopped reading for a while and then when i picked it up it was the second part which was the more kind of slower part um and so i think that did drop my rating because it took me a moment to get back into like what the plot was which was obviously part of my fault yeah it was good um and i would recommend like i would definitely recommend and i know it's currently out in paperback now obviously i own the physical book but you can obviously get it in paperback it is a legal thriller but i also think it crosses over into the domestic thriller 
which isn't bad but I think in some ways the end is probably slightly underwhelming <laughs> then I read Carrie by Stephen King this is my first Stephen King book ever um this is the one that I said was on the shorter side because it's like 250 pages at least this edition is um I rated this a 3.5 I put love to the writing style however it was slightly difficult to make sense of at times with how it was laid out in passages and then I put was my first uh, from the author and will certainly read more which I think kind of summarizes it perfectly because it's in like extracts from these fake stories and overall I enjoy the plot if this is probably like a light thriller like it does obviously I think it does still go into the thriller category but it's definitely on like the lighter side um didn't leave me spooked at all I just found it interesting I wanted to see what was next I do want to read more of his I own Fairy Tale by Stephen King which I know is more of his like fantasy-esque books but I do want to read something of his that's more like horror based maybe like Salem's Lot or something which I think is the one with vampires because I know that The Shining is like his most like horror horror um and so I don't want to like immediately jump to that um but I think I'd go for like Salem's Lot then I finished Welcome to the Cornish Country Ho Hospital by Joe Bartlett. I rated this for four stars. It was interesting. I don't remember too much about it. I know I read most of it one morning when I could not sleep. I do want to read, I definitely know I want to read book two, which follows immediately on or pretty much immediately on because there's kind of like a story arc that I kind of continues on into book two and I definitely want to see how that plays out because it was kind of a thing that was impacting the main character's decisions yeah um and also there was oh yes and there was a romance that was started and I do want to see how that plays out like it's a slow burn friends to lovers kind of situation it was kind of friends to lovers it was very sweet I will admit um and there was like two different plots but after a very certain after like a basically a small amount of time they intertwined um which was really nice then i read unexpectedly ruined by irene bird um i famously not famously obviously um on a different video said yeah i think this is a fantasy um or something like it's why i wasn't starting it um no it was a romance turns out it was like book four in a series um I'm not interested in reading books one, two, and three. I've got enough of what happened to know the general thing. So it's a billionaire romance. Um, the main male character is Scottish and the main female character is American. Um, and they meet at a bar in like New York, have a one night stand part ways. Um, but still thinking of each other. He inspires like her story. He can't stop thinking about her. They find each other. She ends up becoming intertwined with like his side of the business. He's not necessarily the billionaire, but the people in like the first three books were. It did still become like a billionaire romance. There was like a nice kind of, there was a very small mystery aspect in terms of like the history of something in the book. And I kind of wish that that had continued because, and that was part of, in some ways, some of like the for driving force of their like forced proximity and spending so much time together. And I kind of wish in some ways the mystery aspect was dragged out more. I know it was um, like a romance, but again, I do think that could have been a little bit more with the mystery. I know, I'm sorry. Did I say that was the three stars? Yeah. Um, then I read The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. I rated this the three stars. I, part, partly when I went into it, I presumed, oh yeah, this is probably going to be like a standalone. Like, I can read it as a standalone, but then it's internet interconnected. No. Um, like, books one, two, three kind of follow along with the same character. Um, I, I think I want to read book two, but it'll be a while before I read book two just because it wasn't like my favourite kind of series 
and was quite like slow um like i am interested to see like how the romance plays out um going forward because it was it was nice romance although as you know now i've remembered part of why i rated it so low the first half kind of felt a bit like a bully romance because he wasn't nice to her and it wasn't like you could pass it off as like oh he was really sweet no he was mean to this girl how the fuck did she fall in love with him honestly i don't know um but yeah i because of that the romance felt slightly unbelie unbelievable um but at the same time towards the end he was really really sweet it's it was like it was two different men with some very similar aspects and it was like yeah first half again felt a little bit buddy romance-ish then i read icebreaker by hannah grace i rated this to four stars um i really enjoyed this i thought the spice was okay like there was probably a tiny bit too much but also at the same time it was quite kind of clean spice it wasn't like crude or anything i enjoyed the overall plot i did see somewhere online there'd be like oh there was too many characters i think there was just the perfect amount because yes there were plenty of side characters but you kind of expect that for this type of book like it's in a college setting they're not going to be a main character and their two friends kind of situation like obviously there was an aspect of that in it but actually then the white the like the main male character he, he's got more people kind of in his like circle um and he's kind of responsible for more um and i did really enjoy it i i will say i didn't quite like the direction the epilogue went in but also i understand stuff happens but yeah i'm definitely excited to read wildfire and also daydream I will say, having read this, I'm surprised that Russ is book two, because we saw him like once. Yeah, Henry, who we saw like 12, 15 times, isn't until book three. Um, so I can understand why people are excited for Henry. Obviously, I know Henry's book is out. I do own the book, but I'm, I am surprised that Henry wasn't until book three, but yeah so i do hope to get to wildfire maybe in the next month or two um because it does although it's set like at a summer camp it kind of gives the cover kind of gives like a little bit of like autumn-esque vibes um and can be lit read like in like a cozy setting then i finished the thursday murder club by richard osman i also rated this at four stars i really enjoyed this this is definitely a cozy murder mystery i enjoyed the murder mystery aspects i even i wasn't guessing some of the stuff that was happening i think he the way he crafted it this was quite clever there is technically multiple points of views but your main points of views are like joyce in like diary entries and then there's like the the main the other main point of view is elizabeth but yeah yeah i didn't actually i this kept me guessing and i enjoyed the shenanigans of the four in the group um and i am definitely excited to see how it plays out in book two then i finished inca and crown by megan o russell i rated this a three stars i this was a recommendation from a nurse that i worked with i got it for free i did this like the plot was interesting i think there was slightly too many characters which I know I said about Icebreaker that was just enough, but that was for that like setting. And I guess in some ways for the setting of Inca and Crown, there was the right amount. But at the same time, it just, it was so hard to keep track of who was who. Like I could just about keep track of the main, of like the points of views, but actually one of them was very slightly unnecessary. Like there was a point of view called Kai and I'm not, and I think his was mainly unnecessary. Like there was a small part of it that I think was necessary in, for like the overall aspect of the book and what will probably be like book two. Cause this, this isn't, you can't read them as like standalone. Like it is like a series that continues the plot into like book two. And there definitely is like an interesting plot point. And I do think I want to read book two 
but at the same time I think I will wait especially because like the kindle version of book two is like six pounds like you get the first one for free but then you have to pay for the other books so yeah it was good I would still recommend um it was a fantasy by the way I kind of didn't mention that um I've not really been describing plots at all um but yeah and then the final book that I finished and I finished this last night and this is the only book on my TBR that I've actually read like the only there was only I had eight books on there I read one um I kind of I did intend to get some more and I do think I'll get to some of the ones from my September TBR in the month of October um but the book I finished was A Court of Thorns and Roses um I rated this a 3.75 I originally was thinking, oh, I might rate this like a 3.5, but at the end, it was more captivating. I have rated it a 4 on Goodreads, though, because I'm not a heathen. Of course, I'm not going to rate it a 3 when I've rated it a 3.75. Um, but, yeah, I enjoyed this. It was definitely quite descriptive. It could have been a little bit shorter, in my opinion. Sorry. Um, I enjoyed the plot at the end. The first half of it felt a little bit slow, but I did enjoy the ending and how all that played out. Um, I'm interested to see the change in Tamlin in book two, because I know that he's not like what he is. Um, and I know that there's kind of a re reverse role between Tamlin and Reese, like how, like we've started to see some of Reese at the end and like how he is, but obviously Tamlin, um, and like how Reese does have like a softer side to him, whereas obviously we've only seen Tamlin's fairly softer side. Obviously, we have seen some of him like not being happy at um, Feyre, um, not listening. But I mean, I'm interested to see how that plays out. But I've now started a series, and part of me thinks this was on my twenty fourth for twenty four. I looked at that list like once, um, like a month or two ago, and I'm trying not to look at it because I want to do like a blind, like a blind react at the end of the year slash start of 2025. There is the odd book that I remember being on there. Um, and so I think in the back of my mind, I'll probably think about trying to get to those, um, but I know that there's some that's further that was further down on the list that I don't remember having put on the list. And so it'll be interesting to see how that, whether I do end up reading them or not. I kind of think Ninth House is on the list. Because I'm trying to think back to what books had I purchased before this year. Because obviously any books that I purchased this year I I feel like Akatar was on here, although I hadn't owned it. I don't know. I know that there's definitely... I've probably at this point read like half of them, because um, I know at the time I'd read like a third, um, but I'm really not sure. Because part of me thinks that Icebreaker was on there. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what books you want to see me read or what videos you want to see me read, any like theme book like video themes and whatnot and i will see you guys in my next video bye guys